Hello, and welcome to Let's Sip and Talk mm -hmm. with Rima for the second time. We're going to try this again uh, with John Gunning. He is a sumo, re well, he was a sumo wrestler. Now mm -hmm. he's a journalist. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so intrigued by this because I never actually met a sumo wrestler. We actually can ask questions, things we always wanted to know as we were little kids. So I'm just hoping, we did run into some technical difficulties. So I'm just hoping we're able to overcome those so we can proceed. Um, if not, we'll have him call in and maybe we'll still be able to um, do it that way. So I do apologize. I thanks every, thank everyone for their patience with this today. But you know how technology works. That's something we can't control. Things happen. And I'm a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. We just don't know what this reason may be yet. So we'll wait and see if um, we can add him. If not, we'll just have him call in um, and see how that goes. So I'll just wait a few minutes. I'm putting mine. That's not right. Um, let's see. Alan, see, I show that it can add you, but I don't know what's going on. I think this is my fault, and I'll tell you why later. I will tell you why later. Is John on? Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, I see where I can invite him, so. y'all can hear me anyhow my can it still says adding um he's all the way in another time zone so that could be why it's taking a little while but um yeah it says it's adding him alan so we're just waiting to see what happens it could be because he's so far far away it still says adding which is a good thing ah it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> yes, it worked. Finally, finally, we got it working, huh? Yes, yes, we're excited. So, um, John, I was trying to tell them a little about, um, you know, what it is I want to pick your brain about. And, of course, we know that, that you see the caption, sumo wrestler turned journalist. So, you know, I definitely want to start with the sumo wrestling part but however how did you get where you are like tell us your journey you know how, tell us about yourself first yeah i mean that's 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 a long one i don't know how long you got especially i'm irish you know keep going for the next few hours basically the short version of this is that uh i came on a, to japan on a holiday about 20 years ago and uh, just absolutely fell in love with the place. I was living in Ireland at the time. I'd lived in the States before that. I'd lived in Italy. But Japan just blew my mind. And I didn't want to leave. After the holiday, I, was, I remember I was Googling, like, how can you stay in Japan on a tourist visa? And, uh, yeah, but I, I went back, and I just I had to get back to Japan. So I quit my job, sold everything I had, and I was back living here within eight months. I didn't speak a word of Japanese when I got here. Didn't know anyone in the country. Just, but I'd done that before in my life uh, with a friend of mine. We just suddenly decided we wanted to move to a different country, and we just we were drunk at a party, and we picked Italy, and we moved to Italy. You know, so I, it, I, I have history with that kind of thing when I was younger. So I got to Japan, didn't speak Japanese, started working in a company here, uh, gradually picked up the language, and I was still, I was twenty seven or twenty eight, maybe when I moved to Japan. Uh, I was still young, slim, good looking. I was playing soccer and yeah, I was doing that for a few years. The sumo thing initially was because it was the only thing I could understand on television when I got here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean like basically television, there was, it was, there was internet, but it wasn't like it is now. 
And so, you know, television was still the main thing for most people and for me as well. And sumo was literally the only thing I could understand. I was like, okay, and watching as well. Like, hey, these guys are really athletic. It's not like two yeah. fat pandas belly bouncing each other. You know, like the image that everyone... Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> everyone. I had the same thing, you know. I expected like two big guys gently in diapers, like, you know, like Kung Fu Panda kind of stuff. But... Uh, no, it wasn't like that at all. You know what they're like? And I've written accounts about this. It's American football linemen. It's football, it's offensive line for guys, basically. Okay. So it's... Uh, yeah, we've taken... Now that I'm in sumo, like I've taken guys from the NFL into sumo and they've done training and practice. And the O-line guys all say it's exactly the same as run blocking. The only difference with sumo is because they don't have to run up and down a field all day they can just put everything into that explosive power. So they don't have to have the yeah. fitness to run 50 or 60 yards because everything is in the box. So they, that's why they put on even more weight. So, they, I mean, these guys are, you know, they're bench pressing like 440 pounds, a lot of them, you know. Yeah. So they're big, massive, strong guys. And, yeah, it's just, it's offensive line. But basically for me, yeah, I was here. I didn't understand anything. Uh, played soccer for a few years, moved up to Tokyo. And uh, when I got to 30, I blew up my knee, couldn't run anymore. And I was already a big fan of sumo at that time. So I thought it was like everything else. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give this a go as well. Why not? That's kind of my attitude all the way through life. You know, if there's something like just give it a go. I mean, the worst that can happen is it doesn't work, you know. And, uh, and you won't know unless you try. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I want to. I've always wanted to be a person who left no regrets, you know? Just, nice. just do it. Like, I mean, the regret of doing something and then having it failing is not nearly as bad as never doing it and always wondering, you know? So uh, I, took up, yeah, I took up sumo and I got my ass handed to me for the first four months. <laughs> I had no experience in any kind of sport like that at all. You know, I was a soccer player, so I was just like running around, kicking a ball and just going up against these guys fighting. I got more bones broken than I can even remember, you know. It's just violent stuff. And, uh, yeah, then, so, but gradually got better and better. Did it for 10 years. Also, the fact that I started it when I was probably about 30, which is the age most people give up, you know. Uh, yeah, that didn't so, but, yeah, it was great. I ended up fighting in world championships. And, uh, yeah, so I, but after, when I got to 40, yeah, just body wouldn't go any further. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so did you have to gain weight, John? Did you have to get to a certain weight level to compete? So in the professional ranks, there's there's two types of sumo. There's professional, which is, you know, because it's so elite, it's like the NFL, basically, of sumo. And then there's amateur, which is everything else. So I was too old, obviously, and, not, and too small to join the pro ranks. So I was doing amateur sumo, but I was training with the pros. In the amateur, we have weight classes. It's like wrestling or boxing or judo, you know. So there's, there's different weight, not as many weight groups. So uh, I was 60 kilos. So let's see, six, six, 100. So I was 100 and, 132 pounds, about 132, 140 pounds when I started sumo. Uh, because I was, yeah, I was soccer. I was a winger. I was just running all the time. And there are lighter weight classes, but the lightest one is, yeah, I, it's, it's maybe another 20 or 40 pounds heavier than that. So I needed to gain some weight anyway. But like everything else, like I said before, I, if I'm going to do something, and do it right. So I, I doubled. I went, from, I went from like 125 to 250 pounds in two years. Wow. <laughs> Deliberately. Oh, man, that was fun. That was really fun. It was just like, you know, you, you go to eat what you want to eat. You can eat whatever you want, and you're like, this is more training. I'm just training. So you're sitting there in front of the <laughs> television, you know, you just stuff in your face, and you're like, this is the best training I've ever done. Uh, but still, you know, I mean, you got to go to the gym, and you got to lift, lift, lift. There's, there's no running or treadmill or anything like that. It's just all power. So you're just, right. you're just lifting heavy things, and then just protein shakes, and then just stuff in your face and sleep, and and getting as, getting as big and as strong as you can be, basically, you know. What's so, the heaviest weight you were able to lift? Oh, I can't remember. That's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> for, it's because sumo is almost all about lower body power and, you know, explosive power. So we do, like, the, the, all the other things, like the chests and bench press and deadlift and stuff like that. But 
with the leg ones anyway, I, whatever plates were in the gym, I had them all on the machine. <laughs> you know? Whoa. Yeah, it's, two, it's two collapse. Like I, I was never in, I was never, I had no background in that kind of thing. I was not a, a wrestler or a football player or anything like that. So I didn't have any background in that strength thing. I just came from running and soccer and stuff like that. And just to, to see your body change over a couple of years and just get stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I really liked that. So. Wow, so I want to take it back just a little bit. Um, so I remember you said that, you know, you just decided to like up and move to Italy. So how old were you when you decided to do that? Early 20s? Yeah, that was, what age? So I was, I was maybe a year or two out of college. Um, oh, wow. So oh, what it was was I'd been in a relationship. It had broken up. I wasn't happy with my job. And I was at a party with a friend of mine. And he was the same. I think he'd broken up with someone too. And the two of us were just sitting there drinking, complaining about life, <laughs> and, yeah, as you do. And I remember, yeah, we're just at a house party and we're talking. And I was like, oh, man, I'm sick of this. I just want to get out of this country and do something different. And he was like, yeah, me too. And I said, yeah, okay, let's go. So where do we go? And I said, How, why don't we go to Sweden? And his, his, like, this is literally the conversation, right? He was like, no, Sweden's too cold. Let's go somewhere hot. Let's go to Italy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's go to Italy. So literally, I think it was like three weeks later, we'd sold all our stuff, quit our jobs, just cashed out what we had and got on a plane, went to Italy. Because if you're... Yeah, if you're European, right? So you can work and live in any country you want, right? In, in the EU, right? So um, in that way, like being in the EU is like being from different states in the US. Like you can go live in whatever state you want, right? Same right. for Europe. Europeans can go and if they're part of the EU, they can just go and live and work in any country they want in the EU. So we just got in a plane, arrived in Rome, uh, no job, no house, no hotel, nothing. And just, yeah, I think we were like 20, 24, 23, 24, something like that. And of course, yeah, we just like spent a week partying and, and then we're like, oh shit, we, we better get jobs, you know? We better get right. jobs, we better get something to do or we're gonna run out of money. So um, nothing was happening in Rome. And then it was like the same kind of conversation. I was like, okay, let's go somewhere else. And I said, let's go to Milan, let's go up north to Milan. And he was the same, no, no, we're cold, let's keep going south. So we just got in a play, uh, train and went south, and we got as far as um, Salerno and Amalfi. If, if you Google that place, like the Amalfi Coast, it's like something from a movie. It's just like beautiful yeah. cliffs, crystal blue seas, small little houses. You hear me? I had to move locations. Can yeah. you hear me? Uh, yeah, I got you fine. Your signal is poor, is it? Yeah, I don't know what happened just now. I do apologize. Oh, hold on. I got you on the computer as well. 
Uh, no, I don't. I don't know what I can do. Okay. Hold on. I got you on the computer as well. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you see me okay? I can hear you now. I can see you, but I hear a lot of noise. Yeah. Somebody's got a computer on or something like that. Uh, I, I can hear an echo somewhere. I don't know where that's coming from. Very well. Can y'all hear us on the live good or is it bad connection? Very well. Okay, we're not good. Yeah. We can just keep talking anyway. I guess there's a delay, but you know, for us it seems to be. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you were saying that, um, so y'all moved further because he wanted to stay where it's more warm. Yeah, so the, That's we, why I left yeah, we just got on the train, went down south till we found this beautiful place and just got off the train and started working there. Yeah, so this why I left. Yeah, we just got on the train. Wow. Yeah. I just, so, so how did you start? Okay, so let me ask you this. Ooh. Let me ask you this about uh, Sumo, and then I want to move on to okay. um, the journalist. <laughs> With the whole, I don't know if it's called a diaper thing, but is that a must? Like, y'all have to wear wear that, and why? So that's, um, you know what the weird thing about Sumo is, right? So Sumo it's looks like they're thing, naked, but right? But the, you have to wear if you think about it, Sumo is probably the only wrestling sport we actually have something to grab onto. One of the few, anyway. Because like, in regular wrestling, they're wearing the signet or whatever it is, but you can't actually grab it, right? There's nothing to actually hold on to. So Sumo is... Um, yeah, I mean, you, you got to wear it. If you're an amateur sumo, you can wear cycling shorts or something underneath it. So it's okay. But uh, you need that because basically all the throws and everything are done using the belt. Yeah. The echo is like I know. I'm just ignoring it. I don't know if everyone else. I'm trying. So really quickly, because I don't want to hold you too long, and I don't know if everybody else can hear um, the echo. So how did you turn into journalism? Like, was that a passion of yours? Or, I mean, like, how did you turn to doing that? Yeah, so I, so I'd always done a little bit of journalism. So I have a degree a in media and communications. Um, but I've been off doing other things. Like, I spent most of my life working with kids with autism and rare disabilities. When I lived in the States, that's what I was doing there. Uh, kids that maybe had difficult backgrounds and stuff like that or wasn't treated well when they were young. Like that was, I'd kind of been into that work for years and uh, done different things, but the media was always there in the background. And then just when I gave up sport, you know, I wanted to stay in sport, obviously. I love sport, so uh, just started writing more. Just started doing some more, and just it's that that industry is is strange because there's no real. I mean, there are journalism courses, but in reality, they don't. You learn a little bit from them, but the vast majority of people who work in the media just started doing it and just worked their way up. So um, you can. Uh, so, but yeah, it's basically you do work, and then people see the work that you do, and then. You know, um, if your work is good, you generally people approach you and ask you to do more work. That's kind of the way it works in journalism, you know. Okay, so with journalism, you're like grasping a story, right? Like you're telling a story, or you like what exactly is journalism? I mean, in the old days, basically, it was the media. Like a media is just something that transfers something from one place to another, right? So like a pipe is a media for transferring water from one place to another. So the media basically, the point of it is something's happening and we're transferring the news of that to the general public and the wider people, right? So basically that's it. Nowadays, people have so many different ways of getting information. There's media all over the place, social media, you know, regular media, whatever. But uh, still, the heart of it basically is letting people know what happened. So, you know, I mean, 
if you're political media, obviously you want people to know because it affects their lives. For sports, we're more in the entertainment, essentially, you know. I mean, some people take it very seriously, of course, but at the, at the end of the day, sport is basically entertainment, you know. So people are doing things that are fun, like they're play these guys are playing games on a field or, you know, having fun. But people are invested in the results of that, so we just let people know what's going on, what the athletes are thinking, how, what's... For me, personally, most of my interest is in behind the scenes, like the stories of the athletes, you know, that, that's the real heart of, of sports media for me, you know, the, how people got to that position, what they had to go through, it's, it's drama, you know, it's the movie, the movie side of it, basically, you know. Okay, so what was like your hardest um, uh, story? Is that what you would call it? Your hardest piece or your hardest... That's I don't know the terminology I would use for that. You know, that's a really good question. No one's ever asked me that before. Um, I don't know. Like, most of the stuff that we cover at the end of the day doesn't matter because, you know, wins and losses, while they make people feel upset, they're just games. So, I mean, obviously, personal tragedies and stuff like that, but for me, I don't, my company, we have a rule that we, if, you know, we don't really spread gossip or we talk about people's personal lives because, for me, it doesn't matter. The public don't really need to know what an athlete is doing, you know. If it's a politician, it's different, right, because they need to know what that person is like because that person has some influence or control over their life. If it's an athlete, we we'll would say, and it's, it's, not, it's their personal business. It, they are, the people, they're doing the entertainment part of it and the people are consuming the entertainment part of it, but they don't really have a right to know every single thing that that athlete is doing in their life, you know? Um, yeah, so, I, so we generally keep it to on the field. For me, maybe like some of the hardest things is guys that I would have been very close to or helped actually join the sport or help become athletes when they mess up and get kicked out or lose you know their position or stuff like that uh there was so like the first egyptian the first muslim ever in sumo i helped put in right so he was mailing me from egypt from when he was like 13 or 14 years of age saying he wanted to come to japan and he wanted to be a sumo wrestler and so I helped him do that, and I was very close to him all the way through his thing. And then, you know, he he was driving without a license, and he got involved in some accidents and some other scams, and he got kicked out of the sport, basically. And he was still young, you know, he's still like in his late 20s. So it's, you know, when, he's, when his whole dream is over at that stage, and he's he had a baby on the way, and, you know, no idea what he's going to do. So, like, it's really hard on a personal level. To actually have to cover that and you know tell people about that obviously like he's a star and he's gone from the sport so you have to you have to cover that story but on a personal level he's also my friend and he's in a really rough situation so it can be hard to have to write about that you know yeah i can imagine <laughs> hopefully he didn't feel betrayed or anything you having to cur cover that you know that he no no, 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 no i I'm very open with guys, so my one of my rules is basically I never write anything that I wouldn't say to somebody to their face. Right. So I, if I criticize an athlete or if I write something bad about a team, it's exactly the same thing I would say to any of the athletes on that field or any team member if I met them personally. And that's a rule that we have in this company. If you're going to write something, it has to be something that you'd be willing to say to the person. You can't be hiding behind your keyboard, right? So right. you got to own things. And we don't put up stuff that doesn't have the names of the person who writes it. If it's that heavy, like, if it's a strong, critical thing, you got to own it. you got to be the person. If that's what you believe and that's what your thing, then you got to stand by it. Um, so that's kind of a rule with that, you know? And that sounds like that's a way to make all your team, you know, win. Because if you can't say it to someone, you know, in their face, then, then why write about it? And that takes a lot of backlash away from you guys, you know? Well, that's yeah. good. You know, if you're, if you're a sports journalist, basically, athletes are going to be unhappy about everything you write unless you say that they're the greatest ever, <laughs> you know? So every athlete, to be a professional athlete, needs an awful lot of confidence and dedication and self-belief, right? So every, every athlete thinks 
I'm the man, I'm the, or I'm the woman, I'm the greatest ever, and nobody appreciates me. So anything that they see written that doesn't follow that story, like they're never going to be happy with it. So I get an awful lot of abuse and feedback, you know, but I, I'll get into it with people and say, look, you might think that, but that's not the stats. Or, you know, if you, have, if you think something is not fairly reported, then let me know. Let's get into it and we talk about it. But um, we're here on the outside and we're looking in. Of course, we don't know everything that's happening inside a team or a locker room. So this is how we see it. If you don't believe, if you think that that's not right, then give us information that shows it's not right. If you want your story out there, but we're entitled to our opinion. And if you had a bad game, I'm entitled to say that I think you had a bad game, whether you like it or not. <laughs> right. So this, you know, they, they gotta live with it. You know, they're in, that's their their whole life is basically the professional athletes. Their payment comes from fans watching the game, right? So they're they're entertainers. And sometimes they love good games and sometimes they love bad games. And that's just life, you know. So I mean, uh, but it does, yeah. You get you get a lot of angry emails and messages from athletes all the time. You know, that's just part of the, the life, though. <laughs> well, that's good to know, John. I really appreciate you sharing all this information with us. Um, and the main goal, um, because lately, you know, I've been having individuals come on just telling their story because I want people to know it's more out there than just not saying it's not successful living in the States, but you can always be successful and just do your royal and just go out there and do it. And, you know, and, and you're a prime example. I didn't know you actually just dropped everything and just did it. And now you're successful. So I need people to know it, it's OK to step out on faith and just do it. You know, you, you know, have, because like you said, I'm a strong believer. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. And if you, you won't know unless you ask, you won't know unless you try, or you're going to beat yourself up not knowing. Exactly. You know, you got all these people. I know you had Tyrone on as well, and Tyrone is the same. But, like, it's a lot of the athletes, like the football players who play football out here that come from the States. A lot of them didn't even know there was football abroad or the opportunities. But you asked every, every single one of them. I don't think you'll ever find anyone who regretted coming here or playing. Or even it's the same in Europe, if you go to Europe. The worst that can happen is that you don't play so well, but you still get to live and experience another country and another culture, and you broaden your mind, and you get new experiences, and you learn new things. You know, that's... Living abroad is the best education you can get. I mean, honestly, it is. For me, I went abroad. When I lived, my first place I lived abroad was in the States. I came from Ireland when I was really young. And uh, everything was so different. A lot of things that I thought were, you know, like the, the sky is blue and this is true. That's not the case. Like in another country, nobody, nobody thinks that or nobody believes that. And it's like, it's really shocking. You're like, wait a minute. Everyone around me before had thought X was true, but now everyone here thinks Y is true. What the hell? So like, that, that really broadens your mind. You know, you get to see the fact that everywhere you go, people, people are people, but like there's a lot of different opinions and life experiences. So just get out there and go, you know, you'll never regret living or traveling abroad. No one ever regrets that, I think. Wow, that's amazing. I must say, just speaking with you and speaking with the other young gentlemen that had the, you know, were able to live abroad for a little while, they had nothing negative to say. And it only motivates me to, because, you know, actually, I am a little scary, you know, to, to go. But um, I think I'll definitely try it, you know, to maybe that'll be the next trip I take because I hear nothing but good things. Yeah. I mean, look, you. You go abroad and you'll have some good experiences and you'll have some bad experiences. But I mean, that's the same where you are. You walk out the door of your house and you'll have good days and bad days, you know. But at least, you know, you'll have your good or bad day, but at least you'll be sitting inside of, in front of the Eiffel Tower, you know, or go see me eat pizza. It's something different, you know. <laughs> uh, you'll, yeah, it's no one will ever regret traveling, I think. Yeah, I agree. And just lastly, John, what would you tell the parents who just had their kids that, you know, just graduated, whether it was high school or college, and their kids actually want to, you know, go somewhere far? What are those encouraging words that you would give them right now so their kids would be able to experience these things? For the parents that's scared to, you know, cut ties. You're talking about parents in, the, in America? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, look, you know, I, I see a lot of things on Facebook where people, somebody's going abroad and you see their friends going, you know, be safe or stay safe. The reality of it is 
most of the countries they're going to, they're going to be a lot safer than they are in, in the U.S. right now, you know? So they're actually going to a safer place in a lot of cases, in most cases, you know? And that's, I mean, that's not getting political or anything like that, but, you know, worrying about, unless you're going to North Korea or somewhere like that, you're pretty much going to be okay, you know? Um, American people, if, it's, if you're talking about American, Americans are basically liked everywhere, you know? I mean, you see a lot of negativity written, but that's more about like politics and government level. But on a personal level, American people are really generally outgoing and friendly and like generally get on with everyone where they go, you know? So it's like, so just don't, don't worry about your kids. I know it's really hard, like for, for a parent, a parent is going to be worried about the child whenever they're outside the door anyway, you know? You can't, that's never going to go away. You're always going to be worried about your kid when you can't actually see where they are. But if they're an adult, they're actually probably better off going abroad because they're going to learn a lot of skills and learn to take... So that in the, at the end of the day, they'll be better prepared for life and challenges that are coming in the future anyway. So, you know, than actually just being sheltered and staying in one place. So, in a way, they'll gain experiences and they'll gain knowledge that will help them and keep them safer and let them be more successful in the future so yeah just let them go just let them go and uh, let them enjoy it and make their own mistakes you know that's, that's, that's true and, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that john so i really appreciate this time with you thank you so much for sharing your journey again this may motivate the next person to just go out there and do it I'm really so i really appreciate your time and Getting up so early in the morning for us because I know it's 8 a.m. there, the 109 now. No, I'm, up, <laughs> and, I'm up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. every morning, so this is nothing for me. Oh, wow. I, I really appreciate the chance to come on and talk to you. It was really great. I'm glad we got it working in the end. So wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. It was nice meeting you, and hopefully we can work together again soon. Absolutely, Freema. Thanks a million. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Again, thank you, John, for sharing that with us. Um, parents, uh, again, I, I've been, you know, speaking to individuals playing abroad, playing football, the younger generation, you know, just because I know it's a lot going on right now. And I don't want us as parents to be scared to allow our children to go out there and try something different. And John said a mouthful is actually safer over there and he's not the first person to say that i had damien on he said it i had anthony anthony on and he said it and those are young men that are saying this so let's not hold our children back you know i know we have a lot of graduates this year if that's something they want to do let them do it you know don't hold them back don't ever be regretting the fact that you didn't allow your kid to go do something that they're interested in and it just happens to be in another country um, I was speaking with Kali, you know, about Kali, have you ever thought about, you know, and now he's considering like, man, I never thought about it. A lot of people never even knew about it. So again, I do want to thank Alan for even putting this out there in the air. A lot of us um, were ignorant to the fact that, you know, you can actually just go over there and, and they love Americans. You heard him say that for, from someone that has been living over there nearly, you know, almost all his life, well, not all his life, but you know, starting from the early twenties on. So Y'all take this as, no, let me back up. And I know y'all hear me say this all the time. Everything happens for a reason. Take this as the reason. Maybe you were pondering upon, do I let my kid go? Maybe he just want to go somewhere in the States and it feel far for you. Let him go. Don't let him get sucked in and stuck where, where we're at now. Not saying anyone's stuck, but you know, if they want to go travel, if they want to go try new things, if they want to go to that school that's in another time zone, let them do it. Let them do it. Do not hold them back. Do not beat yourself up later because you didn't allow them to do it. Okay. Well, I just wanted to share that with you guys again. You know, I wanted to bring people on that has did different things, you know, out of the norm for us. You know, he was a sumo wrestler, you know, journalist. So that's a little out of the norm for me. I'll speak for myself. Um, so you guys, I thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, Friday is Juneteenth. For everyone that's celebrating, be safe. Know the reason you're celebrating. You know, we have to try to make this thing a little more known 
than what it has been. Um, so I'm gonna try to maybe attend, you know, something a few, well, I'm not gonna say a few, maybe a cookout or two, and maybe, you know, ask people, what is Juneteenth to you? Should we start celebrating this faithfully? You know, so that's probably, that is going to be our topic Friday. I won't be sitting still. I'll be out and about. Um, does anything, anyone have anything to say? Any questions for me? Let me know if y'all see somewhere I should be, something that's coming up. You feel I should be there to capture the moment. Let me know. Um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Until next time, peace and love.